Hi, my name is TB from the Sensorica Lab in Montreal and here we are with a second experiment for Greens for Good. Now Greens for Good is an open venture which is nurtured within the Sensorica environment and there's a lot of people from all around the world that collaborate on this thing. So uh, what is the purpose of that venture? It's to build an open source uh, device, it's a piece of hardware that you can use to extract proteins from um, from plants and more precisely uh, you can use it to extract proteins from green edible leaves like spinach if you will alfalfa um, uh, any kind of uh, uh, leaf that that um, it's not toxic for uh, consumption so you will find the link in the description of the video uh, and you can go to the web page and see more about the project but in a few words um, it's a machine, you put the plants, you put the, the, the green leaves inside, um, it has a portion of the machine that is a juicer, so it extracts, it just crashes these leaves and, and, and squeezes them and it extracts the, the juice out of that, and then it heats up the juice uh, to roughly 70 degrees Celsius, and then you have a coagulation of a substance, substance that is very rich in protein. So it's a little bit like you, when you make cheese. You take the milk, you put something in it, you coagulate it, and then that, that liquid with this coagulated solid floating around, you put it in a cloth and you close it and you hang it. And you, if you wait uh, long enough, all the water is going to drip down and you end up with this solid material. In the case of che the cheese, you have proteins and fat, uh, but in the case of these... Um, uh, curd that you can extract from uh, from leaves that is very rich in protein, uh, you obtain a sort of a green substance, uh, green uh, solid substance, um, because uh, because most of the protein comes from from the machinery within the leaf uh, that uh, um, it's responsible for uh, f photosynthesis, uh, and and that is from chlorophyll. So that ends up into into your solid um, protein rich material. And so um, the idea here is to have a device. Um, I, you know, I just described the batch process. You take the leaves, put it in the machine, extract the juice, then heat it up, and then and then separate that solid from the liquid. Well, we're trying to make a machine that that does that in a continuous process. You put the leaves in one side, and on the other side, you have the liquid going from one um, exit, and then and then on the other side, you have this uh, more or less solid paste of uh, which is rich in protein. Uh, but anyway, so go to the webpage and you see more. Now, we published a video uh, where we um, show how you can do uh, that kind of extraction um, on a kitchen table. Okay, so we're not using the device that we're building, but we were just fooling around to get the parameters right, to get a sense, uh, to get our hands dirty uh, on this process. And so um, one of the problems that we have, so that, you know, there, there are juicers that you can buy out there and, and you'll see we're using a commercial juicer here to do the, the, the kitchen table experiment, uh, you know, curd extraction. Uh, so there are juicers that you can buy, so that, that's not a problem. You put, you put leaves inside um, and, and check that, that link for the video in the description below so you can see the, the, the whole process that, that, we, that we did. So... That's that's not a problem. Extracting the juice and then put it in a bucket, put it in a microwave, and then and then you have this this coagulation that, that happens. And and then the problem is to separate that from uh, from the liquid. So so one way to do it, you just take a coffee filter and you pour that thing inside, at exactly like the like the cheese process, and and you wait you wait until the water drips down, and then you just scoop the scoop that that protein rich paste that that you obtain from the leaves, which is about roughly four to five percent of the mass of of the leaves so there's not a lot of proteins in, in green leaves um, so obviously if you want to eat a steak worth of proteins uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna eat uh, uh, leaves because you have to eat like tens of kilograms um, the protein is in, in such a small amount um, but but if you have a machine you have a process um, you can actually extract this and once you have that paste that is rich in protein, well, you can use it as a food uh, additive. You can use it. You can you can add it to some things to enhance. Um, you can make beverages. You can you can make uh, cookies that are that are rich in protein using using that thing. The curd. Um, so one of the problems that we had 
um, is is to to separate this, but but in, in in a sort of a continuous in this continuous process. So you can take the juice, put it in the microwave, have it coagulate, and then put it in a coffee filter. But this is a batch process. Okay, you take the leaves, put in a juicer. That's one process, and then take the bucket, put it in a in a microwave. That's the second process, which is separated, and then you put this in a coffee filter. And, and wait long enough until the, the water drips down and then you have this thing. These are three processes. These are, this is a batch process, right? And we want it to be continuous. So you just put the leaves on one side and, and you obtain this curd on, on the other side. Um, okay, so, so, so one of the, uh, one of the uh, uh, design architectures that you can use for that would be an, ext an, an extruder. Okay, it's like the meat grinder. You, know, you put the leaves inside. Uh, with within the grinder, you have a you have a screw inside and pushes the leaves and then and then crushes them and then squeezes them and then get the juice out of that. This is how the juicer is made, um, and and then we would like to continue to build a sort of a, a, a new section attached to that extruder um, that separates that that heats up the juice and then it separates the the coagulum from from the liquid. So the whole purpose is to make it in a one continuous process. Okay, we want to avoid that batch where you take this coagulated juice and put it in a filter to separate it. So one hypothesis was that if we take this, this coagulated juice and we put it back into the juicer, the juicer might be able to, to, to scoop up the, 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 uh, this, the solid material and leave the, the liquid behind. Okay, and, and put it in, a, in, in the zone of the juicer that, that squeezes and 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 eventually you know you could you could have this curd so use the juicer to take the juice out of the plants then um you know take this take this uh, juice put it in the microwave and then put it back into the juicer to see if we can separate the solid from the liquid without having to go to the coffee filter uh, and if we can do that then it will be easy to to to, to uh, imagine as uh, an extruder uh, that has a as a section that 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 squeezes the juice and the other section that separates the solid, the coagulum from from the juice. Uh, so, so this is this is what we we did uh, in in this particular experiment, and actually the results are negative. So we cannot do it. Okay, so we have to find we have to find a solution for this problem. How do you how do you separate um, the curd from the from the remaining juice from the remaining liquid uh, in a continuous process without without going through a batch process of of filtering it like a coffee filter or something like that okay so um we're going to show you what we did in the lab and then and then come back and look at the uh, uh at the solution that we imagine
So as you can see, the experiment failed. Uh, we took the juice that we coagulated in the microwave and put it back into the juicer, and uh, it didn't work. Everything dripped down. And if we look carefully at the um, architecture of this juicer, we see that um, uh, there is a auger, which is the uh, um, screw that grabs the leaves, as you saw in the process, grabs the leaves, transport them, transports them to a, through a tube, and then compacts them and puts them through a grinder to cut it into fine small pieces. And, and then there is a sort of a, a compression section where all these little fine leaves that are maybe sub-millimeter in size, they, they get pushed and compressed against the filter. And, and, and that's how the juice comes out. Now, when you're making the juice, the solid material is made of fiber. So that um, screen that you see there can actually um, uh, uh, retain the fiber and and let the juice go through these tiny holes it turns out that when you take the juice and put it in the microwave to coagulate it the particles of this curd are, are very small uh, are so small that they go straight through that filter so one of the problem is that well the filter cannot retain the curd within the uh within within the rest of the juice so you could say well we could we could have the we could have a very fine grain filter just reduce the holes of the filter and we might uh, obtain something well it turns out that it's it's kind of hard to have uh, something that is very liquid um, pushed uh, with a a single screw okay um, because um, uh, the 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 water always flows around okay so so it's hard to push a liquid with a single screw the water always comes back or you know uh, so so it's a pretty tough it's a pretty tough problem um, to use um, uh, one screw and and a filter to compress this thing uh, but but there is also a solution and um, and here's here's a video that explains how it works it's it, it is called the the decanter centrifuge and it is used not just in food processing but also in waste management so for example you take like uh, sewage water and and you pass it through this thing and it, it's able to separate um, separate the um, the solid materials from from the water. Okay, in food processing, you can use it to clarify drinks. So let's say, for example, you have some juice extracted from some fruits. Well, you can separate the juice from the pulp, uh, or you can clarify beer. But so once you make beer, there's always these particles. It's foggy. It's not completely transparent. You pass it through this thing, and all the solid material will. Will, will be eliminated by this centrifuge. And what's nice about this centrifuge is that it, it is a continuous process. Okay? It is a continuous process, so, so it, uh, it, uh, it can be... You can put it... If you can imagine this, this, this um, plant protein extractor uh, that, is, that is built as an extruder, you can have the, 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 you know, the, the screw uh, making the section that makes the juice first and then as the juice comes out of that juicer it gets fed into this, this, this decanter centrifuge and in a continuous way it'll, it'll be able to uh, separate the, uh, uh, the uh, solid material, the curd, from, from the liquid. So it is compatible with, with the architecture that, 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 we, that we're thinking. The, pro the problem now is that once you go uh, to uh, build a decanter centrifuge, now you have something that, that spins a, a very high RPM. So, so making something do it yourself that spins very fast, it's not so easy because it has to be very well balanced. As you go 10,000 RPM, 12,000 RPM, 20,000 RPM on this thing, um, it, can, it can wobble a lot. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's mechanically, it, it becomes a more complex problem to uh, work with something that uh, spins very fast. Okay, the juicer, as you can see in the in, in, in at the beginning of the video, um, it's um, it's it's very slow rotating. So so the mechanics um, of of that particular device, it's pretty simple. Um, so so anyway, so one of the solutions that we found is is to is to redesign build this um, um, decanter centrifuge. Okay, and and so we started to uh, build this thing. Uh, I'm going to uh, transition to uh, the website where we're actually doing the design and uh, show you how it is made. So this is a cross-section of, of, um, of the device. Um, you can take a look at the, the whole thing here. Um, 
you can see the shape of uh, the decanter centrifuge and um, we can uh, blow it up in, blow it up into uh, different components so you can see the the screw inside here this auger uh, that scrapes the uh, solid material from the uh, inner part of the the inner uh, wall of the uh, uh, of this um, tube uh, this uh, barrel okay and uh, and uh, the, the 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 juice the the water should should come out of this hose here and the solid material should come out of the uh, other side so it's precisely the the same kind of uh, kind of design so if we zoom in here you can see the cross section um, so it's basically uh, what uh, what you saw in the uh, in the video okay um, here we go so we're starting to design this in 3D, uh, and the whole idea is to um, have a very reduced version, something that holds in your hand. You can put it on 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 the desk, and uh, we're gonna make it. Uh, we're gonna just 3D print the parts and use some bearings to to have a, a sustained high RPM uh, rotation, and and uh, hopefully we're gonna learn something out of it. We're going to learn something from it. We're going to learn how difficult it is to, to, to manipulate this kind of device, how difficult it is to, uh, to, to fabricate it. Um, perhaps, and, and, and then we can think about how to, how to scale it up. Maybe some parts will be 3D printed. Maybe some parts will be, I don't know, made out of cast aluminum or, or maybe some parts will be machined. Um, so we're just trying to get our hands, hands dirty to play with this device in the lab. Take the curd, make it the way we, we, we make it in the kitchen. Um, you know, with uh, with the uh, with the juicer in the microwave, and then and then put it inside and see how well it works. What is the what is the RPM that we need to use, uh, which is rotation per per, per minute, uh, which is the, the speed of, of rotation. How fast should we spin it so that the curd gets um, uh, you know on on the walls, and and it gets scooped out by uh, by the screw. Um, so it's just trial and error. Uh, this is will be our first experiment, um, first 3D printed proof of concept, uh, and 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 just to get a feel of of the the material of the process. Okay, and then we're going to make some conclusions about is it is it possible to design such a device uh, that could be uh, reproducible, easily made by by people around the world. Uh, so what kind of what kind of technologies do you need to um, to, to fabricate it, can we, can we use very affordable technologies like CNC machines, 3D printers, and, and I don't know, some, some, some aluminum casting method, which are readily available in, in any country around the world. Um, can we use these, these, these low, not such a low tech, but affordable fabrication techniques uh, to design something that can be easily reproduced? So that is the goal. Uh, thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for our next crazy experiment.